Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen, for episode 5 in the 20 tonne hydraulic press rebuild. In the last episode, you remember, we assembled and painted the modified air over hydraulic jack, and now I'm moving the focus onto the press frame. And just a quick recap of where we are with the press frame so far. You'll remember we got the top section off here, cut it all apart, removed all the existing crap that was on there, all redundant brackets and whatnot, and corrected the fact that it had been assembled all sort of wonky. I've had to elongate all these holes to remount it to get the unit to sit properly square and parallel in relation to the pressing table to the top so that it does press square and I had to weld the thing up. So even though you can see bolts in here still, it's actually fully welded. So that's where I've been going at it. I've been trying to get all the welding done on the frame that I feel I need to accommodate all of the changes and accessories that I'm going to be running on the new press frame. So I'll just throw the camera on a stick and I'll walk around and I'll show you the bits and pieces that have been done. All right, yeah, folks. So firstly, the plate on this side here with the two holes in it that I've welded on, it's actually just two pieces of uh, flat plate that I had here welded together. I've basically just used scrap bits of steel for everything. That's to mount a hand winch to wind the table up and down with. You've probably seen, if you've looked at anyone's uh, 20 ton press mods or press mod videos, pretty much one of the standard things that people do is fit a hand winch to wind the press table up and down. It really is the first level of modifications for these things. It is uh, such a good thing to do because one of the biggest pains in the bum with these things is moving the, the table. It's just awkward to do one pin at a time to get things up and down and not have stuff fall off everywhere. If you have a way to mechanically raise and lower the table, it is just such a godsend. So not my idea, just something I've seen people do, but it is one of the most basic mods that people do all the time. These pieces of steel that are welded on the top here, they're basically just to run a bolt through that carries a bearing with a groove in it. To bring the wire from the winch up and over the top here and then down the other side where it's uh, where they'll hook on down here on each side has a uh, i've drilled a hole through this piece here this is another mount uh, that i've made up here which holds some uh, press pins that i've got once again up the top another setup for a roller and this one down here is just to pull the cable in behind this so that it doesn't interfere um, because of the fact that this bottom section that it holds onto on the table is out so it means that the cable would would sort of creep its way out on an angle and rub on the inside of this not that that realistically would be a problem and even you know putting bearings on these because it's something that very rarely ever moves having a bearing on there is not really necessary but with access to all the cheap stuff that you can get out of china you know a couple of cheap groove bearings on there is only a few bucks really so uh, you know might as well use them so that's about it for the press frame, I think. Uh, oh, I've made up, you can't see there at the moment, other than there's a couple of tapped holes in the bottom there, but I've also made up a plate to mount a foot switch on on the bottom, and it's not welded on because I thought it'd be a bit of a pain to paint it, and, and also if crap gets caught underneath it, I can just take a couple of bolts out the side and remove it to uh, you know keep it sort of tidy and all that sort of thing. So there is another mount that goes on there for the foot switch. This guy here, that's me, me, me foot switch for the air pump. So as I say, that's all done too. I'll be painting that at the same time as I'm painting this. You can see I, I've got all this fully in undercoat now, which I did yesterday. I have various brackets just over here hanging up. This is the bracket for the foot switch and that's the handle for the winch. I had to modify it to, for clearance and stuff. Like I basically just straightened it out and rebent it into the shape that I wanted. That's the jack handle from my old 20 ton jack because the the handle that came with the air over hydraulic jack was a piece of crap so I'm going to paint that up in the same colour that I'm doing the press. It's got a rubber handle that goes on it and stuff but I thought I'll, I'll get all this painted in the one go. So they're all sitting there in primer as well. They've been etch primed and then primed over the top ready to go. So at this stage, folks, I'm praying for a nice day tomorrow so I can get this thing painted. Uh, it's quite chilly, so I'm hoping that tomorrow we've got a nice day, which we've got good weather predicted, so that we can get some real paint on it, so that obviously when it's all nice and dry, we can start the assembly process, which is where all the fun and glory happens, folks. The fun and glory, that's what we're after. All right, folks, hopefully if it's a nice day tomorrow, I'll see you shortly. All right, folks, the gods have smiled on us. 
It's a lovely day here in the Aussie shed. A little bit of a puff of wind around, but it's good enough that we can do some outside painting. Do have to be a little bit careful though, folks. Last time I was filming when I was priming all this, I got quite a bit of overspray on the camera when I got a bit too close and the wind blew the paint towards the camera and being that it's a shitty thing with plastic lenses, it's near impossible to get the paint off. So I've just got to be a bit careful so the footage might be a bit shit. So bear with me folks, let's get painting. I'm just laying on a bit of a light first coat there, folks. Just trying to get a sort of a bonding layer built up without going sort of too thick before I blow another uh, thicker coat over the top. But uh, we've got to kind of do this in two stages because of the pressing table. Do the top half, get two coats on that, and kind of, you know, bring the pressing table up and things like that. So that's what I'm doing. Onward. Right folks, I'm ready for the second coat. I'm not gonna film it as it was, cause like I say, there's a little bit of a puff of wind around. I've got more overspray on the camera, which I'm not really prepared to do again, just because I can't get it off. So um, yep, I won't film the next coat. And what my plan is with the bottom thing, because you've got the table there, which moves up and down and blocks your painting. Once I get this second coat on, I'll lift it up put the pins in then I'll paint the lower section put two coats on the lower section hopefully it'll all blend together pretty well and shouldn't be a bit of an issue but that's why I don't have any paint on the bottom at the moment uh, I've also got pieces over there hanging you know bloody winch handles and the brackets for everything hanging over there but yeah that's what I'm doing folks I apologize I can't film this I'm just gonna end up with bloody a camera that I have to throw in the bin so um, I'll come back when it's finished folks I'll Paint it, let it dry, and I'll bring it back in the shed, and we'll have a bit of a look at it. And there we go, folks. The press frame's back in the shed. It is touch dry. I can actually ooh, feel the goodness. But it is only touch dry, and even though we can handle it, the paint is still quite soft, so I'm really not keen to start bolting stuff onto it and start fiddling around with it. So I thought I might just divert to a little bit of a side press project, which is the press plates, folks. The press plates. Now, these are the press plates that I've got. They're nothing fancy. They're just, you know, your average kind of a press plate with a bit of a cutout there if you've got to run something through. And like everything else with this thing, you're just trying to eliminate movement on stuff when you're pressing, so it makes it a lot easier to just control things, you know. So what I'm setting this up for is I'm going to put some pins in them so they'll sit between the rails of the pressing table. So what I've got here, folks, they're just some 6mm bolts with a bit of thread on them. What I was after was a nice sort of a smooth shank there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill and tap into the press plates and then... Uh, bolt these in, do these up with a bit of Loctite on them and then cut them off protruding out about 20 mil and just kind of round the ends over. That way uh, I don't have to try and sort of, uh, you know, drive them in and, um, the, you know, there's obviously a lot of things you can use to put pins in stuff. Uh, you could put some sort of spring pins in there, you could, uh, you could just put a bit of smooth shank round rod in there, you know, just drill the right hole with a little bit of a tight fit and just belt them in with a bit of Loctite or whatever, but I actually had these bolts sitting here and I thought, well that's a perfect uh, opportunity to use them. I'll just cut the thread down a bit because they did have a, the thread was probably twice the length originally, 
and we don't need that because obviously we're not going to drill right through the press plates we want them uh, flat on the other side i'm going to drill about three quarters of the way through with a blind hole and then tap it out and then as i say we'll just put these in bit of loctite and then just cut them off uh, at least the bolt head allows us to uh, put them in nice and tight without any dramas so uh, yeah i thought this is something i can do just while i'm waiting for the paint to harden up a bit on the press before we start mounting things so let's do it eh There we go folks, so these will just thread in nice into there, as you can see, so we'll just clean these out, I'll put a bit of brake cleaner in these holes and blow them out, get them nice and sort of oil free and then I'll throw a bit of Loctite on these. But first I'm going to uh, reface these off on both sides, they're sort of flat but they're not sort of super flat and they do have a lot of, um, a lot of dags on the edges and stuff on them. You know, things like, like that, for example, they're just kind of daggy. So what I'll do, I'll linish them on the belt sander, which will get them pretty flat. A lot flatter than they are now, I'd reckon. And I'll just sort of keep an eye on them and see how they're going, just so I can sort of maintain a, a pretty good sort of level of flatness with them. And then I'll thread all these in, lock tight them in, cut them off, and then I'll just spray them. And that way they'll match the press and, you know, they'll be all good. And at least they won't have any of these sort of big lumpy dags on them and stuff. They'll be sort of pretty clean, which will be fantastic. So I might clean them up.
There you go, folks. I wouldn't exactly say they're perfect, but they're a damn sight better than they were when we began working on them. You can see they were pretty rough. They look like they've been just cut out with a uh, an oxyacetylene torch or something. And uh, yeah, pretty pretty rough. I obviously haven't gotten them perfect. You can see I'm, I haven't taken the the sanding to the point where they're perfect out to the edges and all this uh, sort of stuff's gone. But they are now nice and square the edges and nice and flat. It's all chamfered and deburred. Nice sort of rounded edges on everything. So. You know, at least you're not going to be catching on lumpy bits on the corners and having them rock because there's a dag on them. And they are now nice and flat, or pretty close to flat. Not perfect, but certainly good enough for a press. So all we've got to do now is paint them. Slight change of plans with the press plate alignment pins, folks. Rather than putting them in and then cutting them off, I decided just to... Um, just to cut them off first I thought oh, it's probably going to be easier for me to do them all that way I can round them over nicely you can see how sort of nicely that's rounded over I just cut them off and put them in a cordless drill and then just ran them up against the uh, the belt sandy you know and I thought oh, it's probably going to be easier I can just put them in with a pair of pliers and some Loctite because they do actually thread in really nice and easy you know I don't really need the the head on the top to put them in I thought oh, I'll be easier now rather than trying to cut them off when they're all in position and getting them all even like you'd be able to do it but it's whether or not you could get them all even and get them real nice well this is just I figured this is probably the easiest way to go so basically I'm just about to lock tie them in position here we go Oh, too much folks, too much. Jesus. I bloody over Loctite of that, that's for sure. It just ran out like nothing else. And I bloody shook the shit out of it as well, so I don't know what's going on there. Let me lock tight as and turn to water. Oh, there you go, folks. There's one of the heads that I cut off. So you can see that's what they, uh, you know, they obviously used to be like before I cut them off. Obviously, there was a bit more thread on them as well, but we've just used the middle, and that's what we've made out of them. There you go, folks. That was pretty easy. And now they're all ready for paint. And there we go, folks. Just like magic. It turned out pretty good. See the pins in there. Looking very sweet. They are very nice and flat now, which is just fantastic. At least I know when I'm pressing things that uh, I shouldn't have any issues with things sitting out of square. And, uh, you know, they should stay nice and flat. Let's see how they look on the press table. Very nice. So that's fantastic, folks. That's exactly what I wanted to achieve. Uh, they can no longer sort of slide off. Um, you know, they're quite easy to sort of position where you want them without having to worry too much about... Uh, you know, whether they're in the center this way or that way, there's probably so 
that maybe five or six millimeters play side to side on them but uh, you know I'm, I'm pretty happy with that not bad compared to what we had which was just a really sloppy mess that you had to kind of be really certain about whether they were roughly centered or not now they're you know they're just there so paint's still a bit soft so I won't slide them around too much but uh, you get the idea folks and now they're all color matched that's even better because we like a bit of color matching here in the Aussie shed Right out folks I think the time has finally come the paint is reasonably firm in my opinion it would be ideal to probably leave it for another week or so to, to really sort of harden up but hey this is YouTube we can't wait that long so I've just lubed up the underside of the top plate of the cradle to hold the jack and I've lubed up that surface there that meets up underneath the press frame just so that if and when we do need to sort of slide the thing backwards and forwards it's going to have something there to slide it on so let's mount it up eh, and see how it looks all right she's not that light folks it's a little bit of a little bit of a handful prepared folks, I am prepared. Got everything where I need it. Apologies if you if you can't see what I'm doing, but uh, unfortunately lifting this comfortably takes priority. Ah oh, there it is folks. So, there it is folks, not super easy to slide, but that's something that is probably very rarely going to uh, ever be done, but you know, once you loosen it off, you can slide it with one hand, it's not like it's a, it's a big ordeal, slides quite nicely on the grease plates, so there it is folks, I'll just centre him up. We've got there about 610, 305. I reckon that's our center. Just there. We'll nip him up and I'll fit the air pump. Guys, yeah, this is probably going to muck the paintwork up a bit, folks. But uh, you yeah, know, a lot you can do about it. This will be at the back, so no one will see it. should be tight enough hopefully oh, didn't muck it up too bad so I'll throw our airline fitting on folks I don't know what the go with this is it's a it's a taper fitting on here which goes into a hole in the back there and they had a whole heap of thread tape on it like heaps and heaps uh, and I don't know what the reason why is because it should just seal up other than if the tapered thread's been sort of cut too deep and it doesn't seal by the time it bottoms out. So I've just slapped a whole heap more thread tape on there just to just to see, I guess. And uh, so I'll get this together and for the moment, I'll leave the hand switch on there just so that we can check the operation of everything before I go uh, hooking up the foot switch and everything, which is a really simple thing to do. So uh, yeah, I'll get this on and just sort of 
start sussing everything out as it goes together. Thread does seem to have sort of tightened up in the taper, but fuck, you just wouldn't know with this stuff. All right, let's head back to the front. We're definitely getting there now, folks. I think the next thing we need to do is throw a bit of hydraulic oil in her. Might just put a nominal amount in there for the time being, just to make sure that it's going to work. Just get sort of up above the level of the dip tubes and see how we go. It had roughly about 600 mils of oil in it initially, so I think we might throw about 300 in just for our first test. And I know it's probably going to shock the 20 ton jack, but I am going to put clean oil in it. So we'll just draw this up, folks. It's a, what is it, a 25 mil syringe. A little bit of a slow process, but what do you do? It will do the job nicely. We've had a hose blow out. Jesus. That should be enough fluid in there, folks, to be able to decently test this thing. How far the ram will go out is directly relevant to the amount of fluid in it, of course. You know, you're just going to run out of fluid with a pump. The ram's not going to go anymore. But at this point, we should at least be able to see if it's going to work and hang it upside down with some fluid in it. I'll be able to work out if the thing's leaking. Obviously, it's going to start dripping if I haven't sealed it up properly. But unfortunately, folks, we've run out of time. So that's something for the next episode. Thanks for stopping by the Aussie Shed. Bloody pleasure to have you here. If you like how this is going, remember to come back for the next one. Remember to give the video a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. So as always, folks, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.